Welcome to this deep dive. We're going to be quietly conquering the hedonic treadmill. Oh, interesting. And we both know you've been really looking into um, financial freedom and, and what it takes to actually be happy. Right. But you've been looking into this interesting idea that maybe keeping a low profile yeah. is actually the secret weapon. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny because it kind of goes against everything. It does. We're told, right. It is. Like you've been reading about the hedonic treadmill. Yeah. This idea that we're constantly chasing, chasing, chasing that next big thing, that next milestone. Right. That's going to equal ultimate happiness. Yes. But like you've been you've been noticing in your research the thing about milestones. They have a way of moving on us. Always move. It's like you you snag that new phone, right? You've but, been wanting it, you get it. You're like, "Yes." Life is good yeah. for about five minutes, and yeah. then, bam, new model jobs. <laughs> exactly. And suddenly, the thing that you had to have right. feels practically ancient. Yeah, and that that's that hedonic treadmill. It's amazing how our brains are wired right. It's true. We adapt so quickly to things, even the good stuff. Yeah. So you get that rush of happiness from that material upgrade. But sadly, it tends to fade a lot faster than we anticipate. So it's almost like we're chasing a feeling mm -hmm. that disappears as soon as we get close. So if more stuff doesn't equal lasting happiness, right. what does? Right. And this is where your deep dive takes a fascinating turn because you've been exploring this idea that maybe looking poor, at least living like you are, might be the real key yeah, yeah. to unlocking something way more meaningful. Yeah, yeah. And it's fascinating, right? It's not about actually being broke, right? of course, but it's more about making a very conscious choice to step off that treadmill of more, more, more. Right. That society seems to be so obsessed with. Tell me, when, when you were going through all this research, what really resonated with you? Um, you know, I think... I think the thing that really stuck with me was that story about the investment banker. Okay. You know, they had all the outward signs of success, but they felt totally trapped. Right. The designer clothes, luxury car, all of it. It's mm. like they were they were playing a part. They weren't living a life. Exactly. And their story really it really highlights the difference between looking successful yes. and actually feeling fulfilled. Yes. It's like they were living someone else's idea of success instead of really creating their own. And then there's this pivotal moment where they make a change. Okay. And they start investing in themselves. Education, new skills, enriching experiences. It really resonated with me because it's like they were they were breaking free yeah. from that golden hamster wheel. And that's where things get really, really interesting. Yes. Because that shift, that's where I think true liberation starts to take root. Yes. And it's a kind of freedom that goes way beyond what I think any luxury purchase could ever offer. It's like they traded in that fancy car for a one-way ticket to their own life, you know? Totally. They invested in themselves, and then they gained that freedom yeah. to just walk away from a job. That wasn't fulfilling. It must have been terrifying, but so empowering. Absolutely. And and this is where I think your your exploration of financial freedom gets really interesting. Okay. Because the the source material you shared talked about lifestyle inflation. Yeah. Which is something I think a lot of us can relate to, right? Um, yeah. It's like as we earn more, right. we tend to spend more. Yeah. Often without even realizing it. Totally. It's like you get that raise, you get that promotion, mm. and suddenly that bigger apartment, that shiny new car. Yeah. It doesn't just seem attainable. It seems essential. Right. It, exactly. It's like we upgrade our lives to match our income. And, then and that's his end. That's the sneaky thing about lifestyle inflation. Yeah. It keeps us tethered. Yes. To that cycle of working to earn just to spend. Yeah. Without ever really getting ahead. Right. But here's the thing. When you consciously choose modesty, even as your income grows, Something powerful happens. What's the heck? You create this gap. Okay. You create this buffer zone mm -hmm. between what you earn and what you spend. Yeah. And in that gap, that's where you find true financial security. Okay. And let's be honest, a whole lot of peace of mind. Okay. So I'm starting to see what you mean about this um, this modesty being a secret weapon. Yeah. Right? It's not about deprivation. It's about creating space for what really matters. You know, like instead of that constant pressure to keep up with everybody else, mm -hmm. you have the freedom to pursue your own goals, your own passions. Precisely. It's it's like you're building a launch pad. Wow. Yeah. Instead of a gilded cage. Right. Think about it. If if a good chunk of your income isn't already spoken for 
by keeping up a certain lifestyle, yeah, you're free to take risks. You're free to yeah. pursue opportunities that you might not have been able to otherwise. Right. And that really resonates, especially with your, you being so into financial freedom. It's like, it's like you're saying, look, if you choose to live even a bit more simply, mm -hmm. you're not just saving money. You're also like opening up possibilities. Absolutely. And it's, it's not just about the financial aspect either. Think about, think about the time. Think about the mental energy we expend. Oh, yeah. Constantly wanting, buying, upgrading. What could you achieve if you freed up that mental space? That's a good question for everybody. Everybody listening, ask yourself. Yeah. It's like you're decluttering your mind as well as your life. I love that. And and speaking of speaking of things that we value beyond material possessions. Yes. You were really looking into this idea of authenticity too, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and that's where that Dostoevsky quote that you that you highlighted yeah. comes in. If I had 100 million I would still walk around in old clothes because the knowledge of my wealth would be enough. I know. What a statement. Isn't it? It's like it's like he's saying true wealth. Like it's not about flaunting it. Right. It's about that deep inner confidence. Yes. That comes from knowing that your worth is not tied to what you own. Yeah. And that kind of authenticity, that genuine confidence, it shines through. You know, it's like that saying, <sighs> Be interesting, not well-dressed. It's about what's on the inside that counts, right? Absolutely. It's about cultivating that that richness of experience, of personal growth, mm. a genuine connection with others. Like, those are the things that truly make a life meaningful. It really makes you think about what you're drawn to in other people, you know? Yeah. It's not like the flashy car or the designer handbag. Right. It's that spark, yeah. you know, that genuine confidence and that warmth yeah. that comes from somebody living authentically. Exactly. When you are comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. And you're not relying on possessions to define you. It's magnetic. It is. People are drawn to that. Yeah. And it leads to much deeper, more meaningful connections. It's like you said, true wealth. Yeah. The kind that really enriches your life isn't about what you accumulate. It's about how you connect with each other and the world around you. That's that's a big shift in perspective. It is. Yeah. And, it, and it circles back beautifully to this idea of, you know, financial freedom that you've been you've you've been unpacking. Right. Yeah. Because ultimately, isn't that what it allows us to do? Yeah. To live a life that's aligned with our values free from those constraints yes of constantly chasing more it's so true because when you put it that way it's like it's clear that financial freedom isn't just about having a fat bank account right it's about freedom yeah freedom to create a life that's rich in experience relationships yes personal fulfillment yeah. and sometimes that means you know choosing to live a little bit more simply mm -hmm. prioritizing experiences over just accumulating things oh. couldn't have said it better myself it's about crafting a life that's fulfilling from the inside out. Yes. Not the other way around. It's been so great to unpack all these ideas with you. It's been fun. So for everyone listening, as you continue your own deep dive into financial freedom mm. and what it takes to really be happy, we want to leave you with this. What's one thing, just one thing that you regularly spend money on? Yeah that maybe you could reevaluate. It's a good question. Could simplifying in that one area free up not just your finances, yeah. but also some time, mm -hmm. some mental energy, yeah. maybe even open up some possibilities you hadn't even considered before. What if that one shift, that one conscious choice to step off the treadmill of more yeah. could be the key yeah. to unlocking a deeper, more authentic, and ultimately more fulfilling life? That's something to think about. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah. It's been great exploring these ideas with you. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep living a life that's true to you.